Here we have uh, section 8.3, day two, and this is the in-class notes, and we start out with the dot product, and it'd be A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2, always plus in the middle. Orthogonal vectors, if vectors A and B are orthogonal, uh, the vectors A and B are orthogonal, if and only if A dot B is equal to zero. Find the dot product of U and V, then determine if U and V are orthogonal. So we're going to multiply the x's together essentially, so negative 15, and then we're going to add, multiply the y's together, so that's negative 2. The dot product is negative 17, and no, these are not orthogonal. How about this one over here? We have negative 18, and then plus positive 18, and that is 0, and yes, these are orthogonal. They do uh, form a 90 degree angle. Use the dot product to find the magnitude of the given vector. Well, the magnitude of b squared is b dot b. So let's get b dot b. We have 144 plus, I, I don't know what 16 squared is, 256. So the magnitude squared is uh, 0, carry the 1, 0, carry the 1, 400. So square root both sides. The magnitude of b is equal to 20. We're going to square root both sides to get that answer. How about the, this one over here? The magnitude of c squared is equal to c dot c. So that's 1 plus 49. That's 50. So the magnitude of c squared is 50. And so the magnitude of c is the square root of 50, which is 5 squared of 2, because 50 is 25 times 2. Angle between two vectors, if theta is the angle between non-zero vectors A and B, then there's uh, the formula for finding at least the, you know, the cosine of the angle, and then we do inverse cosine of both sides. Find the angle theta between vectors U and V to the nearest tenth of a degree. I already have the answer here. Let's try to get that answer. We have cosine of the angle is equal to, we need the dot product, so negative 20 plus negative 8. There's the dot product. Let's get the magnitude of that vector u, 25 plus 4, and square root of 16 plus 16. Let's go over to the calculator. That's negative 28, and we're going to divide by the square root of 29. And then we'll divide by square root of 16 and 16, that's 32. Great, we have something between negative 1 and 1. So negative 0.919, keep on going. Uh, now I need inverse cosine of this value. So inverse cosine of the answer is 156 and rounded to 156.8 degrees. Let's try 3b. Cosine of theta is equal to the dot product, so negative 54, and then negative 35. So there's negative 54, negative 35. Square root of 81 plus 25. That's the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, which is 36 plus 49. Let's get the answer here. How about, um, let's do this. Let's go negative 54 minus 35, there's the top number. We're gonna divide by square root of 106. 106, that's the magnitude of the first one. And then we'll divide by square root of 36 and 49. What is that gonna be, 85? 85. And all right, we get something that is between negative one and one. Looks like we're on the right path to 101.5. So cosine is negative 0.9376. Keep on going. Let's take the inverse cosine. Inverse cosine. Oh, oh, I, I hit something wrong here. Let's go to, oh, I didn't put a value in. Inverse cosine and the answer. There, oh, 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 oh what? All right, I, I'm sorry. Let's try this again. Negative 54 minus 35. Uh, oh, no, it's plus 35, plus 35. There we go, plus 35. So no negative, plus 35. All right, let's go plus. 
divided by square root of 106 and divided by square root of 85. All right, so that's, uh, here we go, negative 0.20016, keep on going. Now how about the inverse cosine of this answer? 101.5, hey, we ended up getting it, 101.5. A plane has a bearing of 0, 0.35. That's going to go northeast, so let's start down here. Eh, something like this. There we go. How about uh, let's let's label some stuff. Magnitude is 480. If this is 35, then the unit circle measurement has to be 55 to get 90. And we need the wind. Let's put the wind up here. There's a wind blowing from from a bearing of 290 with a speed of 65 knots. 290. Well, if we start here, 90, 180, 270, and 20 more is 290. So like this, but it's blowing that way. It's blowing from that bearing. So now the resulting path of the plane looks like that. Oh, my, oh, I hit my mouse. I wondered why that was popping up. All right, uh, the wind is 65 knots. And, oh, we need the unit circle measurement for that angle right there. So if this is 20 degrees, this is 20 degrees, that's 20. So all the way around like that would be 340. There's your unit circle measurement. So let's go plane, 480, cosine of 55, and 480, sine of 55. Uh, there's the plane. How about the wind? 65 cosine of 340 and 65 sine of 340, like that. There we go. So the result is, let's go 480 cosine of 55 and then plus 65 cosine of 340. Now we get 336.39696, keep on going. But we're going to put that in A, store in A. And then 480 sine of 55, can barely read my own handwriting, plus 65 sine of 340. Maybe I can slow down and write a little better. This is 370.9616. Keep on going. And we're going to put that in B. So store in B. We want the magnitude of R. That's equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So square root of A squared plus and then B squared. 500.8 knots, and then we need the angle. So the tangent of the angle is equal to B over A. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of B over A. So inverse tangent of B divided by A, and we get 47.797. And let's see, where is that angle? Right, That angle is actually right there. There's the 47, but we want the true bearing right there. So we just have to subtract this from 90. So 90 minus the answer, and we get 42. So 0, 4, 2 degrees.